Nowadays, the first thing we do to check in with one another, how's everything at home? How's the family? Is everybody healthy? Is everybody safe? How are you feeling? Um, does this thing, has this thing gotten you down? You know, just a more compassionate side and just uh, realizing everybody's got, in, uh, you know, everybody's an individual, everybody has their own challenges. Everybody, you know, is uh, vulnerable to fear and, uh, you know, fear that's, that's out there and the uh, concerns of mortality, obviously. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammond. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? When you think about trusting your employees, do you think about how transparent you could be? Or do you think about what they need to know and what you need to hold back? Transparency is one of those lines where a lot of people will go just as much as they need to. And some special leaders will go as far as they can. Today, we have a very special interview about transparency with Saint Hung. He's the CEO of Universal Processing. They are a processing company for small businesses and those underserved. And we talk about what he sees is the core factor for the reason why they grew so fast. They were number 500 on the Inc. list. When I talked to Saint, he really shared some of the, the things that he's compassionate about and why that's important inside his leadership and why it contributes to growth of the company. But we also talk about transparency, what it is, why it's important, and why you must go as far as you can to be as transparent, to build trust with your people. Here's the interview with Saint. Before we dive into the interview, I wanted to remind you that you can actually get a tool that I've been working with clients with for the last couple of years. I've refined this tool that's gone through several iterations. Now we have it completely automated. You can actually go online and fill out the leadership quiz. To get the leadership quiz, just go to theleadershipquiz.com. That's pretty easy, right? theleadershipquiz.com. What you will get when you do that is you will answer a few questions. You will see where you rate based on the core principles of fast growth companies. If you're ready to grow your company or you want to see where you are, then make sure you go to theleadershipquiz.com. Inside it, you will get insight to where you are, understand where you want to improve, and you will get them mapped into the 10 areas that are most specific to fast growth companies. Again, go to theleadershipquiz.com and you can get that right now. Hi, Saint. How are you? Hi, Gene. Very good. Very good. Excited to have you on the podcast. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, I've already told our audience a little bit about you in the opening intro, but I'd love for you to kind of tell us about the company. So what is and, and what do you do at Universal Processing? Well, uh, Universal Processing is a financial technology fintech company that handles payment processing. Um, people think, uh, oh, are you like PayPal? Are you like Square? Are you like uh, Chase Payment Tech? That's exactly what we do. But um, early on, I had felt that there was a need for small brick and mortar mom and pop businesses to have their servicing concerns addressed. And I formed a company specifically to uh, help them out. The uh, mom and pop business owners, the female owned business owners, LGBTQ business owners, and minority business owners. Well, I know businesses need to, to take processing and it's good to have you on their side. You have grown really fast and I don't ask everybody this question, but beyond just fast growth, what are you really proud of there at the company? I'm proud of the people at the company. I'm proud of the people that start with little to no work experience and they grow and become leaders, they grow into their own. And, um, you know, it's, as, as we scale, it's very tough to say that we uh, only rely on the each one teach one type of mentality, but we really do take a handful of people that we see have potential and we foster them and we develop them, we cultivate them as the most essential resources of our company. You know, you, you work in an industry where you're required to, it's not just like a body shop. You don't need a person to handle this. You need their thinking mind and brain. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, background, back end, like processing and, and all the work that happens, technology, and you have to build 
people that have those those kind of skills, but also communicate together. Correct, correct. We have to cultivate those people one by one. I know you were talking with my team a little bit, saying about some of the important factors to growth, and and one of them that came out was transparency. Um, why do you think transparency is important for your company? I think transparency uh, becomes more and more important, especially in in this day and age, and with even with what's going on right now. Um, individuals, uh, certain leaders, without touching some touchy subjects, if there was more transparency, maybe society as a whole, the United States, the entire world, could have uh, done a little better to react to um, this situation that we're currently experiencing in uh, you know, quarter one, now quarter two of uh, 2020. I 100% agree with that. And, and it, transparency is one of the, the key themes that keeps coming up mm -hmm. when I keep talking to founders like yourself that are growing fast growth companies. Why is transparency so kind of critical to growth? Um, well, transparency is actually one of our primary principles, one of our six core principles. And I think the reason why it's um, so integral to growth is because um, the more clear cut you are to your individuals, to your talents, the more clear cut you are to the public at large, uh, the simpler it becomes. Because every single company out there these days that are marketing is like, oh, we want to save you money. We want to do right by you. We all want to do that. And everybody can say that. But um, if we cut out the BS, so to speak, then we can just make things simpler and we can just, you know, do business uh, the way business was intended uh, many decades ago. Give people a smile, give them a sincere handshake and do the very best you can for them. And I think a lot of that is lost in uh, the corporate culture that we see around us in corporate America. Hold on, Saint just talked about core principles. You may know them as the core values of your company. It's very important for you to understand what they are, but not just what they are, how to use them, how to create rituals inside the organization that allow you to operationalize them, to live by them day in and day out. When Saint talks about transparency, it's not something you do every once in a while. It's a common theme throughout everything you do, and it's apparent everywhere in the organization at every level. That's what core principles are, and we call them core values here. Back to Saint. You know, there's a big quote that I often remember when it comes from Mark Twain. I love some of the things he's talked about before, but you, do, yeah. you don't have to remember uh, the, the truth. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah. If, if you don't lie, you don't need to remember anything because you're always just telling the truth and you're always just being yourself. And uh, it's refreshing to be able to do business like that. When you think about leadership, why do you, you know, there's people out there that, that say, you know, the financials, I'm going to hold back. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll start there. Where do you draw the line? There's certain things that you probably do hold back and there's certain things you're legally required to hold back. But where do you draw that line of transparency? I try to tell my colleagues everything possible, everything that we're illegally allowed to tell them. Obviously, I report to a board of directors and, you know, quarter X numbers before the actual lease date. That's, you know, that's got to stay within the shareholders and the board. But um, just like this crisis, uh, before, you know, the moment we saw the iceberg, we told everybody, hey guys, we're seeing an iceberg ahead. We're going to do our best to gather all the information and let you know in advance. And uh, we were fortunate to come to the decision um, of uh, transitioning, taking a full hard pivot to work from home uh, about a week, a week and a half before the, uh, the governor, the state of New York and the mayor of New York City decided to uh, do that, make that call for everybody. So, you know, uh, throughout all points, full transparency. We're thinking about it. There's a crisis. Hey guys, there's a crisis. We're being honest with you. I didn't realize you were in New York. I know that oh, sorry. you probably yeah. told my team, but you're, you're kind of the heart of this thing in the U.S. Um, has that been anything different as far as the, how your communication or the, the rhythms of communication for the business? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I'll be transparent right now. Um, we were one of the fastest growth companies in the U S and we were, uh, approaching the end of quarter one, uh, making a blowout quarter. And then we get hit by this and 
wow, I mean, just as an entrepreneur that's never seen anything I couldn't handle, any challenge insurmountable, here we are getting hit with, uh, you know, 80, 80, 75, 85% of our revenues just disappearing. Small business owners going by the wayside. Um, once proud and strong brick and mortar businesses, even chains, franchises, um, being reduced to uh, cowering, very vulnerable individuals that are stuck at home. That's, uh, that's what it is right now. I, I want to get specific with this because I like to go deep into this. What, sure. are you, what are your communication rhythms in a virtual work now? Have they, have they changed much? What could you share with us that you think you do differently that allows people to align together, coordinate action, and all of the things that we need to do as, as we work together? Well, we used to be a face-to-face uh, -face firm, a face-to-face -face consultancy for the most part, um, going to our business owners, meeting them face-to-face, -face, and being in the office, uh, having a pretty sizable sales staff, uh, having small meetings face-to-face, -face, discussions face-to-face, -face, eating you know, productive lunch hours and whatnot. Now we're checking in with each other via Zoom. We're uh, having a lot more phone calls because obviously social distancing going on. And I think just recently there's a lot more care. We're a loving kind of family oriented company, but nowadays the first thing we do to check in with one another, how's everything at home? How's the family? Is everybody healthy? Is everybody safe? How are you feeling? Um, does this thing, has this thing gotten you down? You know, just a more compassionate side and just uh, realizing everybody's got, in, uh, you know, everybody's an individual, everybody has their own challenges. Everybody, you know, is uh, vulnerable to fear and, uh, you know, fear that's, that's out there and the uh, concerns of mortality, obviously. Saint, when you think about creating this environment for your employees, it's one thing for you to be transparent and, and believe in that. How mm -hmm. do you um, ensure that your employees are transparent with each other where, where they need to be? Well, we take a, uh, a lot of steps to ensure that. Um, we've got, uh, you know, the normal company bonding events. Uh, some companies do it twice a year. We like to do it uh, monthly, quarterly, happy hours, all of that. Uh, if you ask me if, if, that's the, if that's fully effective, I don't know, but it lets people communicate with one another and it uh, opens, allows people to open up, have a good time and um, just uh, be themselves, relax a little bit. Uh, we also have a open workspace, which is no longer novel, but we've, we've maintained that uh, since 03. Um, and I mean, we have the conference rooms to have the really, really sensitive uh, phone calls and communications. But other than that, um, I, I think it's always been that type of uh, mentality in our organization to be flat, and if you have a question, if you have an idea, just uh, speak your mind. And uh, l let's not let uh, hierarchy or corporate politics uh, get in the way of anything. Now, hold on for a second. Saint just said he draws the line on transparency where he's legally allowed to share. This reminds me of something I share on stages when I talk to big groups about culture and transparency. I share the story of HubSpot. HubSpot is a fast growth company out of Boston they grew really fast, but they knew that transparency was a part of their communication, a part of their rhythms, and part of who they were. When they became public, they ran into a little bit of an issue. They could no longer be as open and transparent as they had been in the past, unless they made a big decision. That decision was to make every employee a designated insider, which means they could share openly with these employees. And they've continued that since then. This has been years ago. They thought so much of transparency that they're willing to do something that no other company I know have has done to make every employee a designated insider. Back to the interview. One of the things that you have talked about is trust. And, and I think transparency is one of, the, one of the factors of that. What else do you see drives and improves trust amongst your people? Um, I, I would say that, uh, let's see, integrity and... Uh, being a uh, ethically solid, or everybody being ethically solid individuals for a consistent period of time fosters trust. And we, we screen pretty 
pretty diligently for that uh, with our software, with metrics, but we also have, uh, you know, our normal quarterly reviews and uh, maybe month monthly face-to-face -face conversations, um, just to, to have wellness checks with uh, individuals. And I mean, nowadays, I think the wellness checks, uh, given the crisis, are a lot more frequent than they were before. I don't want to make assumptions. What do you include in that wellness check? Oh, the, the same open, friendly communication. Just how is everything? Are you okay? Is your family okay? Just uh, first making sure that everybody's in the right mindset to do what they need to do for the business owners that they support and for society at large. When you think about mistakes that you've made along this, because I know being transparent can, can have its drawbacks. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you feel like you can share with us about any of those mistakes? Ouch. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, we had a very uh, torturous, painful, and very public uh, to the company lawsuit between um, partners. And we announced that it was happening because um, um, I'd like to be a straight up guy. Hey, we're getting, um, we're getting uh, sued our pants off and uh, let's, uh, let's be strong. We're letting you guys know that's, what hap that's what's happening. Um, there's a shareholder dispute and these things can be uh, very painful and uh, rip apart uh, potentially even the existence, uh, disrupt the continuity of the company. And uh, what we thought was going to be a six month lawsuit became a three and a half year lawsuit. And that was, uh, it was tough, but uh, we stuck to our guns. And uh, when things were, you know, when we saw light at the end of the tunnel, we also explained that to our uh, colleagues and our team. And um, uh, I think we came through much, much stronger. I've seen that difficult situations have a chance to have everyone rally together. I've seen that through this COVID-19 issues. Mm -hmm. um, you probably went through it with this lawsuit. Have you seen that people are rallying to work a little bit more um, creatively, innovatively, put a little bit more care in their work? Uh, yes, absolutely, uh, especially recently. Um, we like I said, we serve the underserved community, uh, minority business owners, women-owned business owners, small business owners. And um, we literally collectively put aside uh, our thoughts of our bottom line revenues or profits. And we said, what can we do right now that will make the biggest impact? So we shifted our focus to education rather than client acquisition. And we started uh, Instagram channels, YouTube videos. Uh, we started a help desk and we repurposed many individuals to educate and assist the small businesses nationwide on how to um, get signed up on this uh, stimulus package. Um, I mean, we experienced the modicum of success and they're the, uh, the bad actors out there, like my, uh, my home team, the LA Lakers. They, um, you know, did some, uh, I don't know, un, unenviable acts, and uh, many of these companies uh, took the wrong actions, but I think we were on the right side of history by helping out the, the guys that actually needed it go out and, um, you know, at least uh, apply, put their name in the hat to uh, get uh, a part of the small business benefits on the stimulus package. Well, Saint, I really appreciate you being here talking about trust and communication. I want to turn just a little bit to you you know, you've had, you know, a long journey of leadership along your career. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would think was a defining moment really causing you to rethink your own mindset, your own transformation? Absolutely. Yes. Um, probably the day after, um, probably the day after I resigned from uh, JP Morgan. Um, I was with a couple other banks, Fifth Third Bank, U.S. Bank, and then uh, J.P. Morgan Chase for four straight years. And I was still in my early 20s then, but I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't do this anymore. You know, it's been 
a, a good run for seven years and um, financially the, uh, the upside is good, but I don't like what corporate America is doing to me as an individual. And I have to go out there and uh, do it my way, no matter how challenging it can be. And I mean, when you're a, when you're a business owner of one, it's got to be my way, right? Nowadays, it's no longer my way. Uh, you know, nearly two decades later, it's, uh, you know, what the group thinks, what the uh, panel thinks, uh, what the senior leaders think. But yeah, that was a defining moment. Resignation and just saying, I have to succeed no matter what. I have to go out there. I have to uh, punch a hole in the universe for myself and uh, make this vision a reality. Well, Saint, I appreciate you sharing that with us. It takes a lot of courage to be the entrepreneur, break away from that, that salary. I'm sure you're glad you did. I'm sure the 85 plus people that work for you and are growing underneath your, uh, the umbrella of this organization, I appreciate it too. So thanks for being here on the podcast. Appreciate it. Thanks. Another fantastic interview here at Growth Think Tank. I really love talking to leaders that are on the front lines, doing this and living it every day. Saint talked about some of the things that are different because of COVID-19. It's all different for us. We can't continue to run the same playbook of leadership that we used to. We have to slow down a little bit. We have to be more compassionate and we have to be a little bit more transparent than we probably are comfortable with. When I think about my own leadership and how it's grown over the years, I can move between different styles when necessary, depending on the moment, but also depending on the employee. And this is important for you too. I work with leaders that are really focused on their defining moments and really rising to the next level. If that's you, I'd love to connect with you and get to know you. My name is Gene Hammett. You can find me at genehammett.com. Uh, you can look at details there. You can find more about who I am, what I'm doing. But the key here is, do you want to continue growing as a leader so that you can grow the people so that the people will grow the business? That's what I do. I do it every day. And that's what I love doing. Make sure you keep tuning in here to the Growth Think Tank podcast. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.